Hello friends, in this video we're going to look at this Kenwood Audio Video Surround Receiver model VR-505. I've already done a little research on this. It's uh, from about 2001. So that's uh, during the composite video era before digital video kind of took over on uh, HDMI ports. So this has composite video ports on it. This is a real beast as uh, surround sound receivers go. We've got 100 watts and 5 channels. It also has an output suitable for a powered subwoofer. So like all receivers of this era, it includes a built-in Dolby Digital to uh, decode the multi-channel audio. And uh, you can plug in any standard DVD into this. Uh, through a DVD player and the associated audio and it, it'll decode it into the 5.1 channels that it outputs. Another use case for this might be if you wanted to connect it to a PC to do some uh, high-powered surround sound for video games. So even though this is a little over 20 years old it's still a, a useful item and it's also has a a phono preamp which a lot of modern uh, AV receivers do not have so you could also just use this as an ordinary stereo with a, a turntable hooked up to it so I haven't tried this out yet uh, my brother picked it up at a at a good price I think it's worth in the hundred dollars or maybe a little less range uh, if it works well so we're gonna plug it in and try it out next and later on in the video we'll pop the lid and look inside. Here's a quick shot of the back. We'll go into more detail on that, but the easiest signal source uh, is an FM antenna. I've got one of these simple FM dipole antennas hanging around from my last project. This has a connector that's seen on some uh, receivers that's probably the less common type. I don't have those handy so I just poked in one wire here and I'm going to wrap the other wire with some electrical tape. We'll see if I can do that. And that's not the best but it should be enough for just some basic functional operation. I'll put on some speakers, turn it back around and we'll try out FM. As usual we're going to start with a little current test on the, this unit. It's currently turned off. Turn that on, we see 122 volts, which is about right, zero amps. Turn the unit on here. Heard a relay click, that's always a good sign. Seeing a display, hearing what sounds like AM static, half an amp, that sounds good. Let's verify we're on, oh I got my static wrong, it's actually FM static. Let's try to do, oh, this is the input select. This is the multi-control. Get to 89.3, that's a strong station in this area. Okay, so we've got some, sounds like evening blues coming out of the speakers. Let's crank it up a little bit. Oh. That cranked it down. Those are pretty small speakers, so I don't want to drive them too hard. So this is essentially off on the volume. So go back to some sort of go back to some sort of moderate setting. That's good. What do you think, Kitty? I tried to get him involved in the introduction part of the video, but he wouldn't do it. Okay, well, whose fault is that? Okay, so let's go ahead and try the... don't have anything hooked up here on all these options. Oh, I guess uh, probably... Band is AM versus FM. Let's see, 640. 
is a strong station in this area. Not sure why it's not finding that. Kitty's upset about that too. Okay, well we won't worry about that for now. But the fact that we've got FM coming through is a very good sign. Uh, here's a mute button, let's try that. Okay, that works. This might be AB speakers, I'm not sure. Oh, that looks like we've got a five channel mode here versus a stereo mode. Uh, let's just look at some of the controls. Setup, input mode, dimmer, monitor, sound, listen mode. Not sure what that is. ProLogic. Okay, source direct, band, auto cinema, and memory. So, this looks like it has the basic features we'd expect in this type of unit. Um, Physically, it looks to be in very good condition, very few scratches and dings. It's got this little uh, nameplate on it, which might be removable, I'm not sure. Um, so, things look pretty promising so far. We'll take a look at the back of it next. So, here we are on the back. We've got an unswitched AC outlet. We've got the two front speakers that I'm hooked up to here. This is the center speaker. Here's the surround speakers. These are kind of organized differently. It's black and red here versus vertical arrangement over here. They call it subwoofer preamp out. So that would go to a powered subwoofer of some kind. Got one of those laying around we might try at some point. DVD uh, Video, monitor, coax, uh, optical. So we've got lots of different sound sources here. Most of these are inputs. Uh, a few are outputs. Uh, record out, record out here, record out here. Here's our composite video input and outputs. We've got CD or DVD in, it says. Video 1 out, monitor out, video 1 in I believe, and video 2 in. So this is in the days of composite video before digital video. These system controls, uh, I've seen this sort of thing on other receivers. They amount to a way that you can gang units from the same manufacturer together. Uh, to operate under single remote control and they kind of talk to each other through some kind of uh, proprietary digital format. That's really not of interest to us in the modern era, but it might have made sense back then if you were buying a whole set of related components from the same company. And obviously they see that as a sales uh, possibility for them to sell more stuff. So here's a little brief look through the top before we take the lid off which we'll do in our next segment. This has a standard sort of uh, screws I've seen two on each side here. Uh, we've got a few scattered around the back then usually there's a lip right under here. So we'll take those off and show you the inside next. I've got all the screws out. We'll see if I can pop the lid with one hand which is always challenging. There we go. This has a little more intricate finger design on the side. We'll go sideways here for a second. You can see the fingers on that. Usually it's just one big strip. So let's look at what we've got. We can see a few things immediately. This is obviously our big power transformer. Here we've got a big heat sink. Uh, we can expect to see some power transistors on the other side of that. And uh, here we've got some power conditioning components. Um, there's some chokes of some kind. And more. We'll kind of turn it around and look at it from the other side and probably be able to see it better. 
Here we are looking from the other side. Uh, I was a little surprised to see these big uh, integrated amplifiers, they're called. Uh, and also, there's an obvious difference in size. So maybe this is three channels and this is two channels, is kind of a guess. Now going back to the rest of this, we've got our RF input section here inside this can. Maybe some sort of preamp uh, or uh, pre-selector in that. Uh, this kind of little interface board here that looks like it's just a connector board. Come over here to this board which has something on it that's a I see with a lot of pins. Have to look at that more closely. That may be our signal processing chip. Here you can see the back of the uh, front panel board, which uh, activates all the lights and switches and things. This is a little board that corresponds to the um, power on switch. Uh, here's some of the conditioning things that we saw from the other side. We've got some large filtering capacitors here and some really large filtering capacitors here. So this is probably the little standby power supply that kind of keeps a minimum amount of it running for when you do, uh, so you can use the remote control. And then this is probably the bigger power supply that uh, runs the channels. I'm actually kind of surprised that this doesn't have more filtering capacitors in it. Uh, at this level of five channels of 100 watts each. Uh, maybe there's more hidden underneath here. Kind of hard to see under that, but I can't uh, really get under there without going to a lot of trouble. So we'll skip trying to dig under there. But uh, it's not any real big high-powered or large components. Here we've got, uh, this is a crystal part those are often uh, D to A converters and that's close to this uh, optical input and these coaxial digital audio inputs so my guess is that this is the kind of the main D to A converter chip with multiple channels and probably in this time period it might be like 20 bits or more 24 bits uh, this board which connects to our video must be mostly the video board and let's see what else there is to see here so this is kind of a secondary heat sink for something probably some sort of as a guess this might be voltage regulator chips here we've got the large full wave bridge rectifier another one here these often stand in the air for a little passive cooling and they have this kind of rectangular shape with a dent in the corner to identify the the pin orientation now cooling wise this has the standard uh, vents on the bottom uses convective cooling to come up through the uh, heat sink vents here and then ultimately through the top lid which has these vent holes in it that's really similar to what I showed in the last video except this is just kind of a larger version more surface area on the heat sink uh, the last unit was stereo with 33 watts per channel and this is five channels with uh, 100 watts each so uh, this is a much higher power unit. The other one had uh, power transistors in it as opposed to these integrated amplifiers. And I kind of think that maybe the audiophile people would look down on these. But, um, you know, I think this unit, from what I've read, is intended to be kind of, uh, you know, in the 
affordable range for a pretty capable system of its era. I went ahead and blew out the inside of this with a dust can, uh, paying particular attention to the heat sink fins, uh, these big IC power amps here and uh, just kind of blew out the rest of it. What really matters for that purpose is anything that might be uh, heat generating like notice these power resistors that are kind of perched in the air. We've got our bridge rectifiers perched in the air so anything that's kind of up in the air that's a sign that it's a heat generator although you can figure it out from the components in a lot of cases. I saw that this is a 7812 which is a three terminal voltage regulator that's probably another one uh, might be a 7912 for negative or some other voltage um, but from an inspection standpoint everything looks real good here uh, the one thing you can definitely check from an inspection point of view is making sure that none of these capacitors are bulging they're designed so that when they go bad uh, they will typically bulge and that's what this little mark on the top is for is it kind of gives it a strain relief to put the bulge in that area so you can see throughout every one of these large capacitors they have their uh, strain relief intact and they're flat so that's a sign that all the capacitors here are very likely good um, and we don't need to worry about those too much or conversely if they were bulged they would definitely need to be replaced uh, smaller capacitors like this typically don't go bad so you don't have to worry about them I've also uh, got a little more information on the boards by looking at them they have names on them that I'll show you in the video but uh, this is uh, the video processor and uh, kind of main uh, computer board of the thing uh, we've got some other miscellaneous boards scattered around so this one says power supply in this section that's probably a local power supply uh, the overall board has other markings on it but they've got this kind of a elaborate connection method from this RF can which may be an IF uh, pre-selector and uh, kind of combo unit for the AM and FM so coming out of here you can see we're working with ribbon cable signals so maybe the entire AM and FM demodulators are inside here possibly including the synthesizer and we're able to run just audio signals and digital signals across this cable that ultimately uh, end up somewhere and on this transformer we've got these kind of interface boards that you can see kind of turn it from a from a wide format into a narrow format that goes on to the cable uh, so that was some sort of a construction technique for them. They found that was the best way to construct it. You know, maybe this board actually came as part of the tr of the transformer itself. Uh, and then, you know, you put whatever cable you want to on this end as the, as the next level of manufacturer. These open air coils are probably RF coils of some kind. Um, not quite sure on that. So that's uh, what we can see from the inside. So overall from an inspection standpoint this thing passes with flying colors. The dust in it is appropriate for its age and uh, there's nothing bad to see. Nothing toasty, nothing bulging. So it's all good from a visual inspection standpoint. That about wraps it up for this uh, Kenwood AV receiver model VR-505 with 100 watts per channel in 5 channels. We haven't tested all the features of this, but uh, there's enough signs to show this is working that we can uh, pass it along to the next owner, I think, with a, with a certain degree of confidence. And I've already placed it on the shelf here underneath uh, a video that I hope to do soon for this Fisher graphic equalizer. So uh, if you'd like to see that, be sure and hit the like and subscribe and uh, that notification icon. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye.